about Illustrator's offset path feature. What the offset path feature does is allows you to take a shape and create a larger or smaller shape that is going to be proportionately scaled to the original shape. Now, you can say, okay, well, why do I need to do that? If I've got this square here and I'd like to make a copy of it, so I'm going to copy this, go under Edit Copy. Then I'm going to choose Paste in Place, which is going to give me a duplicate of that. And if I wanted to make this a larger shape, I could just hold down my Option or Alt key and my Shift key and scale from the middle. And then I've got two shapes here that are the exact same shape, but just one larger than the other. And we could do that, change the color so we can see. Sure. That works if you have a completely symmetrical shape. But if I wanted to take this oval, and I wanted an oval that is larger and smaller than this, if I go in and I copy and I paste, this can give me an oval, just like it does with a square. But if I copy and I paste this in place, and then I reduce this down in size here, what I end up getting is I end up getting, yes, a smaller oval here, but you'll notice that the space between the sides here doesn't match the space on the top. So really what I would need is I would need an oval kind of more like this if I wanted consistent spacing all around. So this doesn't work as well. It works great on a square, but it doesn't work so well on other shapes. So this is where the offset path really comes in handy. I'm going to take my star shape here that I've done my corner widgets on. I'm going to go into the object menu, under path, and I'm going to choose offset path. Offset path allows me to create a larger or smaller path based on my object. Now, if I had scaled down this star here, I would have gotten the little corners, rounded corners here. But then, as you would have noticed, if you copied and pasted and reduced this down in size, these would be closer together here and the points would be further away if I had just done a copy, paste, and a scale. With the offset path, any negative number is going to create a smaller shape. Any positive number, and all I'm doing is using my up arrow in the um, menu here, is going to create a larger shape. And what offset path does is it keeps a consistent spacing around your inside shape and your path that you're offsetting. So no matter where I measure here, it's always going to be the identical distance. So any larger number is going to create a larger offset path. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to change this color. Now what I like about this is that when you create a shape that is larger than your existing shape, that new shape shows up in the background, so behind your shape, so it doesn't cover up your shape. I'm going to take the initial shape that I started with, go back into the object menu, path, offset path, and here I'm going to do a negative number. So I'm just going to use, put my cursor in that window, I'm going to use my down arrow, and you can see that I will eventually get a much smaller shape here. Now, what happens here when we get too small, you'll notice that it doesn't have enough room to go up into the points. And the reason why is because it's taking this measurement between here and it's trying to make it consistent. But unfortunately, when we run into the distance here and here, it starts to make it too small. So technically, this is what this would look like if the spacing were identical. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make this a slightly lighter color so we can see the distance. So this is what I would get when I use the offset path. Okay, Very different than if I took my original object here and I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to copy. I'm going to choose Paste in Place. I'm going to send that to the back. I'm going to make this larger. And I want to show you the difference between what this is going to look like when I take something and I simply copy it. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to choose Paste in Place again. I'm going to scale this down, and I'm going to apply a lighter color to it. Okay, So this is what I get if I simply copy and paste in place and then scale larger or smaller. This is if I use my offset path. Two different things. This looks more of a burst or a kabam or a pow, and this looks more kind of along the lines of a logo where I specifically went in and I wanted to make this to be representational of that shape. So different things. Now what's interesting is when I go and I do this to a line or an open path. When I have an open path like this and I choose the object, path, offset path, 
If I create a larger offset here, you're going to see we get kind of like this fence or these bars. And the reason why is because it's offsetting the path all around. But when it comes to the end, that's where it stops. So these stop right here. Now I'm going to set the joins here, not to miter, because a miter is going to go ahead and give me um, a nice fitting edge. If I do round, what I can do is this will go in and round the ends. Now originally in my stroke, I had put round end caps, or what I call hot dogging the ends. So when I choose the offset path and I choose round here, I can now go in and I can get a round section around my line. And this is nice, kind of create like a little slot or some sort for a logo. Now, unfortunately, I can't go in and I can't do my command or control D to duplicate like I would normally duplicate something. So, so many times if I have an object or shape, I use my option or alt click and drag and then I use my command D to simply duplicate those steps. Unfortunately, if I try to go in here and do that with my other shapes here, I can't do this. And the reason why is because when I take my line and I perform the offset path, it's taking this line and it's performing the offset path. If I just do my command D to redo it again, it doesn't know what to do because it would keep doing the same thing over and over again. If we want to repeat this, we will have to select this path because our offset path would then have to be based on this new path we created. So if I take my object and go under path and choose offset path on my secondary object, it will always remember the setting that I had last, but I have to do this step by step. But this is a really cool way to be able to get something like this around a path and not a shape. Okay, so kind of cool. I like this. So on type, the same thing. Thing with type, you have to convert it to outlines. So this won't work on active type. If you go under object path, offset path, you'll find that the offset path is not available. So I'm going to outline the type. Type, create outlines here. Shift command O is outlines. And there is my outline type. If I choose object path, offset path, I can make one much larger and it puts it in the background and I'm going to switch this color to something other than blue and it gives me a complete offset path. Now if I go in and I select my other path here, right there, so I don't want that, make sure it's not grouped together, I can grab my path here, object, path, offset path, and I'm going to do a negative number by the way, if you want to move very quickly in here, you can just put your cursor and use your up down arrow. But if you hold down your shift key, shift is going to do it in increments of 10. So if you're one of those people that really wants to move quickly, you can do that. Now keep in mind that you can control how the joins work. And I want to show you this because I kept this to round because my type is kind of rounded. Okay. And if I do round, you can see that it's going to take this shape and kind of round everything in here. But if I set this to the miter, you'll see that I get this angle because it starts to conflict with the consistent spacing and it starts to open this up here. So you can try different things here, going in and trying round, bevel. Bevel's going to kind of angle that, kind of give a weird effect. But if I choose round and I grab this, now I can jump back in and I can give myself a different color here kind of create something like that, okay? So now I've got all these different offset paths. These are all unique paths. If I go into my outline mode using Command Y, you can see that they are specific paths. So this is what I love about offset paths. You can create a lot of cool things without a lot of work.